All right, guys, welcome back. It's me, Daniel, VintageMagic.com. And yes, I have now employed with Wizards of the Coast. What do you guys think about my vintage Wizards of the Coast shirt? No, I'm not working for Hasbro. I'm not working for Wizards. I just thought it was a cool shirt. Um, I uh, want to do this video because I haven't been doing these discussion videos. Uh, I've been doing a lot of family vacation stuff, a lot of personal stuff going on, but I'm going to start ramping up. Uh, and doing some more videos. We're also going to be in Vegas uh, July 22nd to 26th. So if you are there, if you have any collections or deals and such you want to talk about, find me in Vegas. You can contact me at vintagemagic.com. Contact us. I'd love to meet with you. Uh, I was buying deals and doing trades or uh, sales, you know, whatever. So um, I want to get right to the video in terms of this video, I want to talk more about the um, landscape and kind of some of the, the news and things that have occurred that I haven't really talked about for a while. So right out of the gate, that Modern Horizons 2 thing uh, where that Garth the One-Eyed, remember that? That's old news now. Uh, but Garth the One-Eyed is that commander card where, which I think is a pretty cool thing. They're bringing back different parts of magic and stuff like that. Uh, but Garth on one eye has an effect where it's a legendary creature um, and it's like uh, one of each color mana. And basically when you tap it, you can bring back one of the uh, one spell of each one. So, so it's like uh, Brain Geyser, Regrowth, uh, Tear, uh, Shiv and Dragon. Let's see if I memorize all of them. Uh, there's a pro I think with Source to Plaster is one of them. I don't know. Okay, but... The most important one is, of course, Black Lotus. Black freaking Lotus. So the internet went crazy in the gaming world in that case. And I, I never talked about it, but now that... Because I, I really didn't understand what the hell they are doing until I saw the video from Command Zone with Post Malone, which we'll talk about that in a second, um, where they were using... One of the guys, I think Jimmy Wong or um, the other dude, uh, Josh Lee Kwai, was playing Garth the One-Eye. And I guess what you do is you essentially cast it. You have a Black Lotus that you either proxy or um, because it's commander, it's casual. I, I would assume that's okay. Or you have your own Black Lotus and you can cast it from just tapping. And you have to pay the cost, of course. And Black Lotus has no cost, so it's a wonderful, wonderful deal. Um, I will say that the initial reaction, this is type of thing that the internet does, is that basically... They, people thought that Wish is going to create these tokens, token Black Lotuses for some weird reason, or token Brain Geyser. I think Brain Geyser is a regrowth card or a reserve list card. And <clears throat> for some reason, that was going to happen. And, 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 and I never thought that was going to happen, especially when I saw like Aaron Forsyth. He's one of the game designers, like Mark Rosewater is. And he just kind of like just ousted it pretty much initially, uh, you know, in the front. But it begs to ask the question, why not? You know, and I wonder, why not? Because they're kind of kind of starting to bring things back, right? They're trying to do massive nostalgia things, massive, you know, like the, the, the borders of the cards. The new sets have these interesting old frame borders that are kind of cool. Uh, they're bringing a lot of the older artists like Dan Frazier and... Um, Richard Kane Ferguson and these guys, they have these secret layers like of Dan Frazier of these Moxin interpretations. They're not, they're not Moxin, they're not Moxes, but they're signets uh, used for pretty much commander. And it, it shows me that the nostalgia card is massive. So why don't they just bring something back? And, and, you know, legally we've talked about the reserve list before. It is the promise. It is the biggest promise they ever made. They basically said they're not going to reprint it um, as they are now. I or, or any other fashion, but they can't play with it. And that's one of the things that I like about the whole thing that they did was they are playing with it. They are allowing it to be used in different ways um, that can be entering, you know, kind of seeing if it works with the game. Um, but why not have it as a token? I, I just don't understand. I Maybe one of you guys in the comments can explain to me why a token really doesn't affect anything Maybe, you know, especially if you write on there, this is a token. This is not a, uh, 
this is not an actual um, like car to be used. So that makes me wonder why why doesn't that why is that not allowed? So I, I, I need to get some clarification on that. If you guys have any comments on that, I'd love to hear more about it. Um, so also one thing I will say is that um, let's get into the topic of the Post Malone thing. That's another story that I've been seeing. So Post Malone, as you know, is one of the uh, well-known, uh, I want to call him rap. I would call him really just wonderful. His, his sound, his music is wonderful. Um, I call it somewhat rap, a somewhat modern type of thing, you know, and he's, uh, you know, collab with a lot of different artists. So Post Malone is, uh, recently, you know, has been coming out of the woodwork with the command zone and did some series of videos where he essentially was playing commander. Um, and I thought the video, I watched the video. It was really cool. I'm not going to spoil the video, but let's put it this way. Post Malone pulls out something that I actually was pretty impressed with because it's an interesting game ender and uh, it's not a, a mechanic that's used very often. So I'm going to leave it at that. In fact, I'm going to link the actual video below so you can watch it. I thought it was very entertaining. Um, great job, guys, at the command zone. So... Post Malone uh, is obviously uh, now in the woodwork. People are asking, well, Dan, Dan, what's the deal? Is he buying cards? I mean, is he going crazy? You know, you know, you know, is he want to invest? Look, Post Malone is one guy. He's famous and he gets a lot of eyes. But let's not over speculate on what's happening. It's not like every I I, I would not doubt that there's other magic uh, uh, there's other artists or, uh, uh, you know, like actors or businessmen or lawyers or famous people right in the world who have played magic or play magic now um and post obviously has uh, or posty as they call as a nickname they he really loves the game you can tell he has a true passion for it which i truly you could truly tell it's it's an awesome thing um but some people just want to be private you know so you can't, you know, the immediate reaction to people is like, well, Dan, are you going to sell him Alpha Lotuses? Because I think on one of the podcasts, he bid it on the PSA 10 Alpha uh, Black Lotus and he apparently um, got outbid or something. And, and and I heard that, I saw that on, on you know, somewhere. And, it, you know, I, I'm not surprised about that either because there's people that are uh, well-known buying Pokemon cards like crazy. Uh, Pokemon cards, in fact, even more public in terms of, who is buying? What? Who's you know? What not? Um, I I think that the most important thing here is that um, it's interesting that more and, and post is uh, post is actually uh, 24, 25, so he's pretty young. So it, it it kind of trumps that that kind of theory that only old people are playing magic, like myself. You know, grain up this, grain up like crazy. One day, I mean, I have all gray hair, by the way. You guys can timestamp videos and see how much gray I've had. But that's that's the truth. The truth is that one one day that you know these people are we we're all gonna get older, there's gonna be younger generations with wealth that will buy these cards in large numbers. Um now that's kind of you know, that's kind of one of those things where like, well, Dan, how you must be just be trying to sell your own product and you know no, no. The, the product sells for itself. I'm just, I'm just really just here just to enjoy the ride. Um, I, I think that my feeling on the future of magic is, you know, post posty. I, I don't know how to call him, but post is really a great example of the younger generation coming into magic, um, who has wealth. And there's people just like that quite a bit, especially with cryptocurrency, Another topic I'll talk about has gone from weird areas of sixty-five thousand dollars at the high to now like dipping like twenty-eight thousand, and now settling at thirty-five to forty thousand. Sometimes it's it's crazy. Um, you know, obviously with Elon Musk, whatever he chooses, it's going to change the world for cryptocurrency. But in Dogecoin, I mean, whatever. But those uh, assets have affected the market a lot. And I think even Rudy did a recent video about his admission that cryptocurrency has done more uh, with the market than he expected. And I have to actually agree that I was not an early fan of cryptocurrency. Um, 
I was not an early believer, let's say. Not that I don't, uh, now, now I accept it, you know, it's fine. Uh, but it, I'm cautious with it. And there's definitely something that you, I have, you have to be clear that it's, it has to be an asset that you take that is something other than your rent money. Uh, I, I don't recommend going all in, uh, meaning your entire investment portfolio is cryptocurrency. Um, you could, you know, I find it to be interesting because you could trade it quite a bit and you can make a lot of money trading. So if you like action, you know, a lot of gamblers out there, no offense, it's fine. Uh, it's kind of like gambling, like stocks. And if you like to trade it, there's so much volatility in cryptocurrency, you can make quite a bit of money. Now, one ca one problem that I do see is taxes. You have to understand that you have to read the tax laws. The tax laws, from what I understand, is that if you if you trade it um, and you at any point you and you're making money off it, you're going to have to pay taxes off it. Um, not that if you're if you're trading it for money, that is. If you're trading within cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency. That's different. Um, that's from what I know. I don't, I think that if you if you receive it, you don't have to pay file the taxes until you actually sell it and turn it into U.S. cash, and it goes into your bank account, of course. So uh, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure, and that's why I'm cautious about it because I I think people are trying to think it's like a tax haven or a tax, uh, you know, way, kind of a loophole, and I, I I doubt that because they've been putting a lot of news about how the IRS is going to the tax the, the treasury is going to be doing things that are, you know, avoiding this kind of like, you know, like funding terrorism, terrorism and stuff like that, or not paying your taxes, you know, from the us, us peons, you know, us lower level people. So be careful, you know, if you're doing cryptocurrency trading, don't think you're just going to be able to get all cash. I would set aside your tax bracket, talk to a finance, uh, a CPA or something. So you are able to protect yourself because what happens is you end up um, getting a big IRS bill, even interest or back taxes, and you're going to be hit hard. You're going to have to sell your asset really fast. And yeah, uh, I see a lot of that happening possibly with the volatility of crypto, honestly. A lot of, you know, because there's a lot of younger generation people that are in, into crypto, they forget that, hey, I got to deal with taxes. That's something that's unheard of. It's not, it, the, the myth is like, oh, crypto is basically, uh, you don't have to pay any taxes. That's just the way it goes. No, that's not the way it goes at all. All right, so the last and final topic I want to talk about is conventions. It's very interesting. Gen Con is September 16th to the 19th. I will be there. If you are going to Indianapolis, Indiana in Gen Con, I would love to see you hang out. I think I've signed up for the old school magic uh, tournament thing they have at the JW Marriott Bar. I don't know what they're they have it at the bar every year. It's like the fourth annual com uh, annual running of it. So uh, if you want to you know, play some games, I'm pretty sure we could uh, have time to hang out. Uh, GenCon.com is the website. Great event as always. Uh, I will be doing something really cool. Um, I'm not going to give away all the news, but there, there's a, a vendor there who has invited me to go there to talk, uh, to display some of these Magic the Gathering cards and collectibles. Uh, I think they're going to have Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh stuff also, uh, gaming related. I'm not sure the extent, nothing's been finalized yet, uh, but I know that I'm going because I've already paid for the travel and they're, the, this the company is, you know, definitely on board. But, um, I, what, what, is it called a sponsorship? Maybe it's called a sponsorship, I guess, you know, but, you know, I, I, I'm just, I think it'd be, you know, it's kind of cool. I'm going to be, you know, doing some stuff with them uh, which I think you'll really appreciate. And it's obviously, you know, you can figure it out pretty quickly. So um, I think uh, if you guys are going to be there, uh, you know, and I'll have more videos about this as it ramps up, please, please, I'd love to meet you again, Indianapolis, September 16th and 19th. And like I said, uh, we I will be in Vegas. Uh, I called it GP Vegas online. No, it's not GP Vegas. It's not happening for a while. Uh, and in fact, Magic Fests are not happening this year. I don't think it's happening at all for a while. Here's what I have seen and know. Uh, Channel Fireball, division of the Channel Fireball events, CFB events, I think it's closed down or temporarily suspended or something. So 
there's obviously something going on. I think there's a dramatic, as you have seen, Magic has gone ballistic, like sales-wise, the profit margins, without having Magic Fest. So, obviously, I love the Magic Fest. I think they're great. I think they're great for the community, great for the artists, stuff like that. But even like artists, too, are making way more money on a more efficient scale without going to the Magic Fest, eating crappier foods, fighting the lines, you know, airports, you know, whatever, right? Calling a bunch of crap around. Oh my God, it's, I mean, I've done these Magic Fests. I can tell you, it sucks in terms of the amount of work it takes. It's a lot of effort, uh, you, gotta, you know, especially international. So I will tell you that I don't think Magic Fests are going to happen, uh, obviously this year. Next year, probably later next year. They might, I think they're going to start with a GP Vegas thing to start out as the big one if they do it. And I wonder if it's even going to be be a magic fest. I would be, I wouldn't be um, shocked if they named it more of like a convention, like a con, like Gen Con or like a, a San Diego Comic Con. So Magic Con, no idea, right? Or MTG Con, I don't know. But you know, Con stands for conference, right? That's kind of how it looks, it's, you know. So Las Vegas, as you know, is completely open. It's like it never even happened. You don't have to wear your mask. I mean, it's crazy, right? So, and a lot of people like myself, I've gotten vaccinated, you know, so it's just like it, the, the the world we're living in is like COVID like kind of never existed and people are just wanting to get out there. It shouldn't go hang out and play games and stuff like that. Uh, I do know that events at stores are pretty much opening up. So that is something that I think like all the F&M stuff like that is going to open up. But I see like sports car conventions. Another event that I think I may or may not go is the uh, in Chicago this year, uh, late July or j until August 1st, is the National Sports Collectors Conference. So I might go to that. That's 100% uh, happening because PSA, BGS, and CGC actually – um, is doing is grading, you know, stuff like that. So I might go there. There's not gonna be a lot of magic stuff, but obviously I like to, you know, do some networking stuff like that. I may, I have some clients in Chicago, so that may or may not be happening. So, yeah, and so th that's kind of what's going on. I mean, I, I I have some travel going on, but all in all, um, after that big Gen Con show, I I think it's pretty much going to be, uh, you know, like a sh uh, you know a, a travel here and there depending on where I go. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, learn something out of it. I apologize. It's been kind of, uh, just crazy. A lot of road trips, a lot of just traveling all over the place, uh, and personal stuff. I appreciate your guys' support as always and enjoy the rest of the videos coming up. There's going to be some interesting content. We're going to do some fun stuff in Vegas and, uh, I hope you can hear from you guys soon. All right, guys, take care. Talk to you soon.